What's that fraction say? One of the greatest challenges teachers face is managing student behavior during instructional time and transitional time. The PAX Good Behavior game addresses this concern by providing teachers with an easy-to-use research-based strategy that reduces disruptions and allows students to focus on learning. Thank you very much for those fingers in the air, ladies and gentlemen. So that signals our next Good Behavior game. I'm looking for some super quiet hands in the air. First grade teacher Matt Burtness has been using the Good Behavior game for six months, and he plays it with his students three times a day. What would a spleen look like if we're working in our math books? Talking to your neighbors. Talking to your neighbors would definitely be a spleen. Saying shh to your friend. Saying shh to your friend. We're just going to do a quick game before PCP, ladies and gentlemen. So. Eight minutes on the clock. To start playing the game, you have to first create the PAX vision for your classroom. And the PAX vision is how you want your classroom to look, to feel, and to sound. The students helped decide what they wanted the atmosphere of their classroom to be. Unwanted behaviors are called spleens, while positive behaviors such as staying in your seat or raising your hand are called PAX behaviors. The classroom has been divided into three teams, and the goal of each team is to behave in ways that will result in the fewest number of spleens. Spleen table three. During the game, teachers continue with their regular classroom instruction, keeping an eye out for potential spleens. When teachers notice that a student is being disruptive or off task, being distracted, they will just mark a point against that team without identifying the student in a very non-emotional tone, and then they will continue to teach. Spleen table three. What do all these subtraction equations have in common? Miss Adrian. At the end, they all have nine. At the end, they all have nines, exactly right. Before playing the game, students were taught different PAX cues, which are nonverbal strategies like the quiet sign, PAX hands, and PAX voices. Let's try a three-foot voice, please. Remember, three-foot is normal talking. 60 minus 9 equals? Seven. Seven. Thank you very much. The positive impacts of the good behavior Seven. game are evident right, throughout the school turn. day. For example, Matt can give short verbal Stay reminders that help job. students self-manage their behavior during instruction. Go Pax. Nice work, buddy. And transition times. Uh, Ashley's giving me some super responsible Pax hands, keeping them to herself. I've noticed that the students have become more responsible, more respectful, and more caring towards each other since playing the good behavior game. One tool that contributes to this goodwill is Toodle Notes. Toodles are written compliments given to students or staff to acknowledge kind behavior. I think I need to give one Toodle out to uh, Mr. Jarrell for being super responsible and doing his work the whole time. One concern that was expressed when we were first introduced to the Good Behavior game was that it would take time away from class time, it would decrease um, students' time on task, um, but I think it's safe to say that it's done completely the opposite. I learned a lot of stuff from playing this game. I just learned how to put my eyes on the teacher, on the board when he is talking to us. I just learned a lot of stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that signals the end of our game. Thank you very much for those two fingers in the air. So, our spleen count, we have uh, table one, no spleens. Very nicely done. Table two, we have one spleen. Not too shabby. Uh, table three, we have four spleens. I am pretty sure that you guys will do better next time and make responsible PAX choices. Uh, spleens that I noticed were we had some students that were talking with each other. We had some students that were just not doing their work. A team with four spleens or more sits out quietly while other teams receive a reward for right, their right. positive behavior. A prize from Granny's Wacky Prize Box. Today's prize? Drum solos. This is your moment to rock. 12 seconds. Here we go. The research shows very clearly that those kids that were exposed to the game in first and second grades 
were less likely to be involved in aggressive and risky behaviors later in life, and also less likely to use tobacco, alcohol, and other drugs. What two letters did she use, ladies and gentlemen? It's helped organize the class, it's helped with teamwork, it's helped with collaboration, and, th and those aren't just skills that they're gonna need now, but those are skills they'll take with them in the future. Thank you for those two fingers up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to start ourselves a good behavior game. So um, I think we'll just go ahead and do just a quick 10-minute uh, game. But before we get started, uh, some, we'll see some quiet hands in the air. What would a spleen look like as we're working through our writing packet, ladies and gentlemen? What would a spleen look like, Sonny? Loud and proud, sir. Playing with your pencil would definitely be a spleen. Jakaila. Saying shh to your friend would be a spleen. I need one more spleen. Mr. Boyma. Uh, Loud and proud, please. Did you just say sneaking to the teacher's desk and taking candy out of it? Yeah, that would definitely be a spleen. They probably owe me some recess, too. Taking my desk candy. That will not happen. I'm, wa I'm watching. Now you know? Don't even go for it. What would Pax behavior look like? What would Pax behavior look like? Miss Anthera? Um, doing your work the whole time. Doing your work the whole time. Totally. Mr. Ferguson. Pardon me? Not stand, not, I'm sorry. Not saying your. Not saying your. Not saying your? Not your. Excuse me. Yours. Okay. That would be Pax, not saying that. Uh, Miss Helen, last one. Not standing up. That would be Pax behavior. Thank you very much. Okay, hands down right now. You guys already know what Pax is. Let's go ahead and get this started. Here we go. All right, so on this page we have my turn. Consonant blends. Your turn. Consonant blends. Consonant blends. Spleen table one. Consonant blends. So you guys know this word. We, we, we fill in the blank with the correct blend. We draw the line to match. Let's go through our pictures first. What is this very first object? What might this very first object be? Mr. Jacori? Just by looking at it, ladies and gentlemen, without even like solving the word, what, 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 what might this object be? Pants? Is it going to be pants, Jacory? Adrian, loud and proud. Pajama top. Maybe it's a pajama top. Maybe. What else might it be? Helen? Jacket. Maybe a jacket. Would it be a hat, though? No. So we know it's going to be like a jacket or like a shirt, pajama top, maybe one of those. What's this next one? Like a little swirl, it's wrapped in something. Miss Anthea, what does that look like to you? A mint. Looks like a mint? That does look like a mint, like a peppermint. Give me a thumb in the air if you've ever had a peppermint that looked like, looked like that before. Oh, I see a lot of thumbs. Excellent. Excellent. What is this next picture of? Oh, that's a spleen at table two. What is this next picture of? It's kind of hard to see in the copy. Miss Ativia. Loud and proud, please. Lightning. That is lightning. Very cool. What's this next one? Chikaila? Lipstick. Maybe lips or lipstick. What else could it be? Angel? Maybe mouth. Okay. What's this next guy over here? I should see more hands up than that. Miss Twee? Quarter. 
My turn. Quarter. Your turn. How much is a quarter worth? Looking for a quiet hand in the air. How much is a quarter worth? Miss Ashley? 25 cents. 25 cents. A plus. And this last little object, you might have one in your hands right now. What is that last off, that last picture, Miss Oshwalk? Pencil. Loud and proud. Pencil. Pencil. Thank you very much. All right. So let's go ahead. Spleen table two. Let's go ahead and go through the words now. So, what are the first two letters, ladies and gentlemen? We have an M and an I. I. What sound does M I make? Looking for super quiet, super responsible hands. What sound does M I make? Well, it actually says my turn. Meh. Your turn? Meh. Meh. Which one of those words did we hear that sounded like meh? Miss Helen? Mint. Loud and proud. Mint. Mint? Does that work? Ladies, hold on a second. Go up to a top, ladies and gentlemen. What, what are the last two letters that would be in the word mint? What are the last two letters for the word mint? Miss Ashley? Do we have an NT up here? Silent signals, please. Yeah, we totally do. So cross off that NT. That's right, mint. And then after we draw the letters, we have to connect the? We have to connect the? Words. words with a? With a line. Thank you very much, with a line. So draw to the mint, please. Draw to the mint. About seven minutes left. Spleen table one. Mint. Mint. Yes, Mr. Ferguson. Yes, you may, sir. Thanks for raising your hand. I appreciate that. Yes, Boyma. I need a first grade voice, please. Does Jacoy have one you can borrow? I'll accept it during this time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, next we have my turn. Mao. Your turn. Mao. We have M O U. Mao. What word does that sound like? We have Mao. Look at your blends up top if you need. Would it be Mauk? Mouth. Mount. Mount. Which one fits? Miss Adrian? So what's the whole word then? Mouth. Loud and proud. Mouth. Mouth. Thanks for using your mouth. So what, uh, what are the two letters for our blend? Spleen table one. What are the two letters for our blend that Miss Adrian just said it? Miss Helen? TH. TH. Thank you so much. TH. And then connect it. Boom. Mouth. We're going to keep going. So our next word, we have lightning. Just play me table one. My turn, lightning. Your turn? Lightning. What word do you guys think that might be referring to? What word do you think that might be referring to, Nativia? Lightning. Loud and proud. Lightning. So what two letters do I need to add to the end of my word? What two letters do I need to add to the end of lightning to get lightning? Aaliyah? NG. Loud and proud, please. NG. NG. Thank you very much. NG. And then please cross it off up top along with TH. Lightning. And then it's right across, so just a little connection. Spleen table one. Yes, Twee. Uh, borrow Ramsey's, please. Thank you. Spleen table one. All right, our next word 
We have a Q-U-A, and it ends in er. Which one of these pictures left might end in er? What do you guys think? Mr. Noy? Quarter. Loud and proud, sir. Quarter. Quarter? Does that work? So what are the two letters that might go in that word then, sir? Spleen table two? Loud and proud? RT. Was that is that one of the blends? So does that work, ladies and gentlemen? Does RT work? Silent signals, please. The TV is giving me a silent signal. Thank you very much. Totally works. RT, cross it off up top, and then connect it. All right, for the last two before we go on to the next page and have you guys do more of them by yourself. I would like to just draw a student's name and then please come up and fill in the next word for us. So for our next word we have P-E and then I-L. P-I-L. What word do you guys think might fit in there? Miss Helen. Go on up, please. What word did she write? Looking for a super quiet hand in the air. Miss Ashley. Pencil. Loud and proud, please. Pencil. Does that work? Table one, are we sleeping today? That totally works. So what two letters did she use for her blend? What two letters did she use for her blend? Only Miss Ashley knows? What two letters did she use, ladies and gentlemen? Miss Oshawa. NC. NC. Thank you very much. NC. Got NC there. But what didn't she do? She didn't draw the line. line. Got to connect it. OK, and last but not least, we have J. It. What do you think, with two minutes left, what do you guys think that last word might be? Jakyla. Miss Jakyla, what two letters did you write? No, 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 just leave it. it it's fine. My name is Jakyla. It looks great. Leave it be. Miss Jakyla, what, what two letters did you write? CK. So what's the word now? Jacket. Loud and proud. Jacket. Loud and proud, please. Jacket. Jacket. Did you connect the line? All the way to the top. Boom, all the way to the top. Thank you so much, Missy. So our last word, as soon as this, there we go. CK are the last two letters. Jacket. Spleen table one. All right, please turn to that very last page in your writing packets. The very last page. Oh, my goodness. The very last page. So let's go through these pictures, ladies and gentlemen. Um, what might this first spear-looking thing be? What might that be? Only Nativia and Jarrell have an idea. In Thera? Earth. Loud and proud. Earth. Earth. That is the end of our game, ladies and gentlemen. So, be. We'll uh, go back over the rest of our writing answers in just a little bit. But before we do that, let's review. Uh, spleams for the game. So, uh, table one, counted seven spleams. So again, guys, our heads are our heads aren't down. We're just we're just sitting. Uh, table two, we had three spleams. Uh, spleams that I saw, we had a lot of students that were talking when I was talking when they weren't raising hands. Uh, saw a lot of students that were playing in their desk, playing with their supply tub, not being on the right page, not having the right activity ready. Those are all spleams, ladies and gentlemen. 
not doing your work, spleens. So table one, I'm, I'm sorry if that, I know that, I know actually, not I hope, I know that we'll, we'll make better choices next time. So uh, table two, table three, let's go ahead and figure out your prize. Yes, Helen. I'll go back there in a sec. Thank you. Toodles coming up. Toodles are coming up. Tiptoe tag. So, I think you guys already know, uh, places that are off limits, of course, my desk, the reading nook, and of course I think you should go without saying that the, uh, any lights, any cameras you're near, should probably not be near those things. So they'll probably avoid any area that they're close to. Um, with tiptoe tag, is it running or is it on your toes? I'm sorry, is it on your tiptoes? It's on your tiptoes. Tip I will draw a name for the first person that is up. But when I call your table group, please just find a spot in the room. Again, you guys already know the places that are off limits. Table two, go ahead. Table three, go ahead. Miss Anthera, you're up. I'm sorry, you're it. You're it. So, oh, you know what? Let's do just uh, 20 seconds. Since it is, to, oh, I, I haven't started the game yet. You're not walking around yet. So, Miss Monsina, is it? As soon as this beeper goes off, you are starting your tiptoe tag. Go get him. Go get him, Thera. Oh, Aisha's it. Aisha's it. Get someone, Miss Aisha. Get someone quickly. Oh, she's gonna stay it forever. Someone's got to be, be tagged by Miss Aisha. Get her, Miss Aisha. Get her. Tiptoe tag, tiptoe tag. Oh, Twee, I love how you froze and put your fingers up. Thank you, Mr. Ramsey's, for freezing, putting your fingers up. That's it for our tiptoe tag game. When I say go, please return back to your seats. We're going to continue our work with our writing packet. Oh, Miss Lee, I've not said go yet, have I? Go. Mr. Noy, without grouping around, because that'd be his sir. I think it's important that teachers start off slowly. I think the most important thing is to create the PACS vision for the classroom, to talk about how you want your classroom to look, to feel, to sound, and not to rush into playing the game too quickly. What I would tell other teachers uh, that are just um, starting to use the PAX GBG is to really give it a, a full shot, like really do, don't do it part way. Um, do it all the way, do it, do, do the different parts. Do the good behavior game three times a day. Um, do the secret game. Um, use uh, the beat the timer game. Um, really work on having um, your interactions with students be positive, really work on not giving attention to negative behavior. The most challenging part of the game has been for me personally to be consistent with implementing all the parts of what the PAX Good Behavior game is. It's not just playing the game for that allotted amount of time and then the granny's wacky prize. Uh, there's also you know, letting the students know that part of it is we're doing this for the greater good of the school and our classroom community. I think one of the most challenging parts of implementing the PAX Good Behavior Game is um, remembering to do the PAX Good Behavior Game three times a day, because um, that's what I've really found to be the most effective is when I'm doing it three times a day as it's supposed to be played. And so it's really just finding time and reminding yourself, like, oh, I got to play the PAX Good Behavior Game now, or I got to play it now, um, and making sure that there's a reward that happens directly after the game to uh, keep students accountable. If I had to implement the game today, I think I would push my kids to go for a longer period of time. I've been consistently playing five minute games and I think they're ready to do seven or eight minutes. So I would increase the, um, increase the time period and I'd also t uh, use some of the other games like uh, Timer Surprise or Beat the Timer, just different ways of reinforcing um, kids' behavior, positive behavior. That would be the thing I would, I would actually do different is to have all of the adults, you know, the IAs, the um, the resource teachers and so on also get to come to the training so that 
um, we were, so that we could be unified about our approach with the game. I came to realize how important tutel notes are. These are the little notes that teachers write to students when they catch him doing something good. And I heard from a lot of teachers how important this is for kids, especially those kids who have challenging behaviors, because this is a good way for them to get positive attention. Don't give up, don't beat yourself up, just stick with it, start with one kernel at a time, um, just start slow and be positive. I would tell other teachers who are becoming acquainted with the PACS Good Behavior Game that it is a wonderful asset for building classroom management skills. I feel that once you actually partake in this game, I think you can't live without it.